Okay, uh, yeah, good good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Crime Pace with Body Doesn't. You might wonder why I'm filming a garage right now, but I'm actually not filming a garage, okay? We're not going down a home decor route yet. It'd be more, you know, be more like a home vandalism thing. See, you know, I go to a golf course or like a gated community and, uh, you know, uh, vandalize some of the signs or stuff. Maybe we'll do that later. But right now, I'm actually at a friend's house, and I'm filming one of the coolest plants in South Texas, uh, if not the United States. This is a kind of serious Pocelgrai, and you can see he's got a really excellent specimen here, okay? This is what's known as the pencil cactus, and uh, the remarkable thing about this plant is it is almost impossible to find in habitat. Uh, sometimes you'll bump into it when you're looking for something else, but it's almost impossible to find in habitat because it just blends in so well with the often white stems of many of the legumes that grow in that thorn scrub habitat. So it's using spines, uh, as you can see, not so much to uh, to poke things that might want to eat it, but to give it a texture of a tree branch and help it blend in with the thorn scrub that it grows in. And it does that exceedingly well, except when it's in flower, as you see it is right now. So there's that perianth, that tube. There's the ovary right there. You can see inferior ovary, like all cacti I have. This means that the ovary is below uh, below the uh, perianth, which is just the, the petals and sepals combined. And this, in the case of cacti, there are no petals and sepals, they're just tepals, because they're kind of, you know, uh, indeterminate, or indiscriminate, excuse me. So anyway, that uh, this fruit will mature if it's been pollinated, and uh, and you'll get a big, uh, a big, you know, juicy fruit with a bunch of tiny seeds inside. But when it's going off, the, for one or two days during uh, its bloom time, uh, it's really conspicuous, obviously, because it's trying to get noticed, and, uh, you know, get pollen deposited on that green stigma, and uh, it pops out. It's just like a little red flag. Other than that, you just you won't even see it. It'll blend in. A lot of cacti do this, remember. A lot of cacti use spines uh, as camouflage, not just as defense, okay? But look at that thing. That's incredible. And then, of course, like so many plants in the region, it's got a big tube, a big fucking potato-like tube down in that soil, uh, that uh, that they can store all its carbohydrates in. So it'll cook up carbohydrates with that photosynthetic stem. Again, even though it's got that kind of shade screen on it, that's the other thing that spines do. They, they make kind of like a shade screen, okay? So that they reduce the amount of uh, UV and infrared hitting that stem, heating it up, frying it, and uh, you know, act like a little shade screen. But, al but also they're often growing scantily upwards through shrubs so the shrubs give them a little bit of cover too but it is so impossibly hot and impossibly dry here for months at a time uh, where these plants grow especially a little bit west of where i am now i'm in a mccallan area right now but west you go to star county you go uh, up towards laredo you know zapata county and uh and it is just really really hot and dry and so you know they, they got to have a strategy. So they got those spines, help them blend in, camouflage. They got the spines that help reduce the amount of sunlight hitting that uh, epidermal tissue. And they've also got the tuber in the ground. But look at this. Look at this flower. Holy hell. All right. Look at it. Really incredible. And you can see they're actually getting spines right there. So the genus Echinocereus has many, many species in it. This is probably one of the weirdest. It used to be classified in the genus, uh, I think it was Wilcoxia a long time ago. But now... You know, of course, not only DNA evidence, but many other synapomorphies, such as the green stigma, place it in the genus Echinoceros. But that tuber, a lot of, lot of cacti and other plants do that too. They've, that's, that tuber is something that many different unrelated plants have converged on evolutionarily as a result of growing in the same uh, environment. And a cool thing about this too, you could break off one of those little, one of those little stems Put it, in, put it in some soil and it'll just root. No rooting hormone necessary. But again, it's got to be hot. These plants need the heat, all right? Temps of 80 or above to thrive. So if you live, you know, like coastal California, this is not going to be a plant that's going to do well. And also, if you live in coastal California, I use a much faster draining mix than the one we got here. Here it's so freaking hot. You know, you need some good organic material in there. You need some sand, etc. But if I was growing this in, say, uh, Oakland or something, I would use mostly perlite with a little bit of uh you know and just just water it uh, whenever it's hot but remember plant cactus metabolism especially is dependent on temperature so this thing needs it hot needs to be in a greenhouse if you don't have temps of 80 degrees or above but look at that thing look at it look at it just how many flowers you got on it there's got to be 25 flowers on it 
It's also in a nice pot too, and a very beautiful embellished pots of which uh, you know you can acquire many down here. A whole lot of nice, they got a whole lot of nice pots. They got the yards where they sell all the nice pots too. God, I love this plant. So those things will be done blooming. You get some good cross pollination, two different gen genetic individuals, and uh, and then you get some fruits, a bunch of seed, and uh, you grow you grow all the seeds. And of course, you get different uh, different uh, genetic recombinations that occur in those seeds. So maybe you get a mutant, maybe you get some. I'm surprised there's not more people growing us. Any of those cactus nerds, those cactus collectors, they ought to be growing this guy. And look at these too. All right, so I showed this. I showed a picture of this to somebody. They thought those were, you know, woolly mites or something, but uh, they're not. Those are just little little bundles of trichomes that pop up. I don't know if they're buds for next year. You can see the, the same trichomes are at the base of all the uh, flower, all the. Uh, see, there's an ovary. I don't know if that got matured or not. If that's going to fall off, but not sure it's, it's, if it's self fertile or an obligate outcrosser. And you're going to need a nice bee to get in there. A nice, you know, big ass bumblebee to get in there and. Uh, move stuff around and uh maybe deposit in that stigma on its way out so there you go echinoceris postcelli another wonderful and underappreciated plant from the region that not many people know about anyway that's all i got for you this evening have a good rest of your day go fuck yourself bye okay you know it'd really be an asshole thing to show you a plant in someone's yard a cultivated one and not show you a wild one so that's what we're going to do over here but first i want to show you this Senegalia right here because it smells absolutely divine. Senegalia romeriana is another uh, really incredible one uh, from West Texas. Okay, down here in South Texas, right on the Mexican border, we got Senegalia right here. It used to be Acacia right here. Again, those those flower spikes, you can see the individual flowers. You got like 15 in frame right there. It smells incredible, okay? Those are buds that haven't opened yet right there. Got the pinnate leaves still and... uh you got those those recurved cat claw spines. Vichelia's got spines only at the nodes, and a Senegalia's got spines all up and down the stem, and they tend to be recurved. See that? So so that's Senegalia as opposed to Vichelia. That's what they do when they split up the acacias, because there's no true acacias in North America. It smells incredible, important for the pollinators. It gets a uh, little bean pod fruits on it when it's done. But we're gonna actually go over here. I'm gonna show you the pencil cactus. We're gonna show you. It kind of serious Pocelgari in all its glory. Uh, we didn't catch this bastard flowering. Okay, we're a little late. But uh, just to see what it's doing here, how it blends in so perfectly. Look at this scandent serpentine bastard. Do you see that? Do you see that? Oh, this flower looks like it might actually, I guess it's, I guess they were probably flowering yesterday. They flower for one day and one day only, sometimes two. All right, when one plant can flower over a series of days, you know, having different flowers. There's that ovary again. Looks like this one actually got pollinated, but you can see what it's doing. It's like a Where's Waldo game, okay? Coming up here beneath the Condalia, right? Which is in a Buckthorn family Ramnaceae. Look at that thing, look. Spines that are just, they're not defensive. They're not armored spines. They're just helping it blend in with all the other white, little white branches and stems and what the shit. All right, it really is playing. It's like playing a game of, uh, of, uh, you don't find that goddamn cactus in it. Look at this. How would you? It's so easy to miss. How would you see that if it wasn't blooming? Oh, look, you got one more down there. See that? See that thing? Look at that. Holy shit. God, what a cool, such a cool little ecological niche. Such a cool gimmick it's got going on. All right? Nothing's going to eat that. That's how it gets away with it. And then it blooms just for a day or two, and that's it. Done. You never see it again. That's actually a massive bastard down there. That is a... That is a really large, it's a really large individual. Probably got a massive tuber in the ground right there. Massive tuber. Look who we just seen out, look at this guy. There you go, he's crawling back into the brush. Okay, nice day out here in South Texas, right? 90 degrees in late March. Have a good one, bye. He's gotta get through all that dried brush too. I wonder if he could ever eat a kind of serious Pocelgari flowers, maybe. We got a big uh, Opuntia Lindheimeri, and right there we got uh, Argiope Orantia, the, uh, yeah, yellow, I guess it's yellow garden spider. Massive bastards, but not very uh, not very dangerous at all. all right, very pleasant to have around. You want these guys around because they're going to do that. They're going to eat all the other stuff. All right, all the, all, the, all the little, you know, bugs and stuff. So there's that's the female, and you can see the male uh, right there. Well, I wonder if they eat them. I think they do eat them. Don't most female spiders eat the males when they're done banging? I think that's what they do. Look at the flowers that he's, uh, 
Look at that uh, Lepidopteran, too. That's, that's a showy bastard. The flowers of these uh, Opuntia really have some cool uh, pollinators in them sometime. Look at that. Who's in there? Well, you got ants. Look at that. Moving pollen grains around. You got those little uh, wood uh, wood larva beetles of Acmeodera. Same ones that pollinate peyote and thelocactus. Okay, I'll put you up here. We'll, we'll look at the spider real quick. All right. See, there we go. Look, you got another Echinoceras posugra right there. See that? On, the flowers are on the way out. All right. If you can see pink, they're on their way out. And then we got a tussock moth cocoon right there. See that? He's going to be in there for a while. It takes him a few months, okay, to, you know, before the moth comes out. But the caterpillar went up there, posted up, and then set up this little woody structure. Isn't that weird? It looks like a damn gall. Look, it's been there so long, it's had time for lichen to develop on it. Holy shit, that's cool. All right, got to post up. Got to be there for a minute, all right? It's gonna, this is going to take a while. Want to make sure you don't get eaten. So you evolve a uh, very uh, deceptive... Uh, looking cocoon just looks like piece of piece of that xanthoxylum which is in the uh, citrus family with tasty we call it wild lime but it's it's not really a lime it does smell good though it's got those pellucid oil glands in it all right look at it you see the one here can you see it of course you can't see it because it's not blooming okay this is what they do that's what they do they hide so goddamn well look at that see there it is do you see it now all right pretty remarkable all right that's what i love it it's got a gimmick all right, any, any cactus that hides, and there's a lot of cactus that hide that don't use spines to protect themselves, but just to hide. You got to respect that, all right? Maybe it'll bloom next year. You can see it goes into the ground. That's the woody stem. It goes into the ground, got the big tuber down there. Yeah, you like shit beetles? I love shit beetles. You like shit beetles? I always like shit beetles. Look at it. Look at how many shit beetles are. There's a lot more earlier, but uh, it looks like they've mostly moved it all away. See, they, they roll up into a little shit ball. And roll. Isn't that cute? Someone ought to make a comic book about shit beetles, all right? If I had more time, I would do it, but I'm already, I'm already drowning in shit. See that little shit beetle named Larry, you know, tell you, teach you life lessons and ethics, you know. Ethics lessons from a shit beetle. I could tell you a lot, all right? All right, good philosophy in a shit beetle. See, this one's coming up beneath the black brush. 90 degrees here in late March, which is when they bloom in South Texas. They're, they, this is a cactus. That it's, you know, some cactus down here will bloom whenever it's warm and they get a good dose of water, all right? A kind of serious posugri tends to just bloom in March. It's seasonal, all right? That's the phenology. Look at, look at all the lichen on a, on a vichelia, on a black brush. Look at that. Holy hell. How many different species, huh? Got, got four or five different species of lichen on this guy. And can you see it? Do you see what it's doing down there? Do you see what it's doing? Look at that. See, just finishing up flowering. It was flowering yesterday. Those pink petals are withering. God, it's so cool. I love it. Huh? How are you going to come out? You never see it. I just hiding in plain sight. It's got a gimmick. You got to respect that, okay? You got to respect that thing's hustle. All right, I don't know why more people don't grow that. And again, you could just cut off one of those little branches and stick it in soil and it'll root. So there's, there should be a nursery just growing these by the shit ton. All right, but you never really see it in cultivation. I don't know why. They do fine. They need they need good heat, but uh, they do fine anyway. All right, I really mean it now. That's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.